Well, welcome back. Investors awaiting deregulation from the Trump administration as the GOP is looking to pass tax reform by September and the executive orders continue uh, on rolling back Dodd-Frank. Joining me right now is Thomas H. Lee Partners co-president Scott Sperling. Uh, Scott, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Us. So what, will the passing of more rollback in terms of regulation, do you think, loosen markets? How do you see the regulation and policy impacting markets? I, I think regulatory reform is one of the major uh, areas of focus that we can still count on from this administration. And it has a very important impact on the ability of uh, companies domiciled in the United States to be um, uh, highly competitive and, in fact, to be uh, able to stimulate additional growth. I think if you look at what has happened over the course of the last eight years, there have been layers of regulation, some of which were required. I think that we needed more regulation of certain aspects of the financial services sector, for example. But if you look at what has happened in terms of the layers of regulation that were imposed, not just by Congress, but then by the administrative agencies, and then the next layer was by the people who worked at the administrative agencies. And that is what led to high, high levels of inefficiency in terms of the impact of those regulations and decisions being made that uh, didn't aid in transparency, didn't aid in making the system safer, but created an enormous uh, pressure on these companies that led to much higher cost and much less efficiency. Mm -hmm. So I do think that the regulatory rollback that we're seeing now uh, under the Trump administration uh, will be highly stimulative to our economy and better position us to be competitive in this very competitive global world. Is this dictating how you allocate capital? Tell us about your own it, portfolio at Thomas H. Lee. So it doesn't dictate how we allocate capital, but it does dictate uh, how we help our portfolio companies either look at uh, areas of opportunity or respond to the regulatory pressures. It does increase the efficiency and therefore the ability to invest both in capital goods and in expansion is uh, both greater and uh, decisions can be made with a little bit more certainty as to what the regulatory I impacts might be. If you look at the last few years, the enormous uncertainty about how uh, regulators might react, specific administrative regulators might react to something, you know, it created a level of uncertainty that raised the cost of making more investment in this country. Mm, makes sense. Well, what specifically would you um, focus on immediately? Because he's done some limited uh, regulatory reform in right. terms of uh, the financial services industry, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. So what would be the top ones that you think would have a big impact right now on our economy? So I think one of the things that you're, that you're seeing is just the entire culture and direction of the regulatory overlay in a wide range of industries is uh, evolving or changing. There are a lot of really smart people who work at these regulatory agencies. Uh, if they know that there, is a, there are certain boundaries within, they, within which they need to operate, in other words, if you're uh, regulating the healthcare sector, the ability to stick with the regulations that Congress has passed and w or with the laws Congress has passed and the regulations that the administrative agency has put down is actually very helpful to the people in that, uh, in that world who compete in that world. Same thing in financial services. Much of the uncertainties that we really had to deal with was not knowing how the regulator, the specific regulator uh, as an individual was going to interpret and impose on that. Uh, industry mm, how, and how that's, we that's an enormous cost because it's mm -hmm. it, we, we don't we didn't know what the rules of the road would be and therefore as you make these decisions it added layers of uh, uncertainty to it is it a slam dunk to see uh, Amazon acquire Whole Foods or get it or, or is get, making Amazon even bigger than it is going to raise a red flag in, for, for regulators my sense is that traditional uh, antitrust uh, regulation would not limit Amazon's ability to move into this area. Amazon clearly is looking at being able to, to take that enormous logistics system that uh, Whole Foods brings for a wide range of products where their systems weren't set up uh, to handle. That That's one of the big advantages for them of having Whole Foods. Um, you know, the, the, obviously the supermarket industry is a very large one and there are a lot of players and Whole Foods, when you look at its store count, isn't a big percentage of that industry. So it's hard to argue that there's significant uh, traditional antitrust uh, regulations or laws that would limit Amazon's ability to make that acquisition. Yeah, it makes sense. I just thought, since talking about regulation, that's one of the big deals we're looking at. Scott, great to see you. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you. You're